Welcome, my fantastic and fabulous friends, to a lesson all about space. 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 Not that kind of space. I want to talk about volume. But first, let's talk about area. Remember, when we wanted to measure how much space something took up within an enclosed shape, we came up with this right here. A grid of squares, or what we could call square units. They really are square units. That made it easy for us to cover a surface and count it up. Except maybe with, you know, parallelograms and triangles. But we took care of those two. We transformed them into a rectangle and then it was easy. But what if I wanted to measure inside of something like this box of plant food? It's not flat like that other piece. It's got space inside it. It has volume. And yes, it has the weight listed right here on the bottom of the box, but that's just how much this weighs. What if I want to know how much plant food is actually inside this box? Hmm, I have to look at another dimension, right? Well, it just so happens that I have here a material that will help us to build a new unit. Check it out. For area, we had the yellow material. And of course, for volume, we have the yellow prismatic material. Look at its fantastic prism form. It's got so many dimensions. Well, I think we can go about this similarly to how we discovered the square unit. Hmm. So, uh, well, I guess let's talk about it the same too. You know, we could mark it like this here and like that there and we can measure I'm sure you can count there's 10 here and 5 there and we can multiply those and get 50 but what are we doing we're still just measuring the area right that's not really what we're trying to do we are missing some things right here hmm okay well let's try something different then what if we extend these lines over to create these fantastic row slices, but I don't know about you. It doesn't seem like the unit for me. Okay, how about if we extend them this way? Then we have some fantastic column slice unit. Yeah, just like with area, this is just not going to do it for us. But we do have another option. What if we extended it both ways? Can you help me with this? One, two, three. If we extend these both ways, now we're sort of back to something like our square unit. But this isn't necessarily going to help us either. I'm sorry to have misled you, but again, look, there's another dimension to this. Ah, this isn't going to work, but maybe there's something we can do here. You see, I've been sort of tricking you. This isn't one prism. These are actually all these slabs here. Look at those slabs. They're pretty cool. And so, thinking about that, look at that. Do you see that's on both sides? And that, that's got thickness to it? All right, so maybe we got to think a bit differently about this since we have that dimension. Maybe we need to think instead of squares as cubes. What do you think? Is it possible? All right, let's give it a try. One, two, three. Oh, Ooh. I don't know about you, but that, that exhausted me a little. We just transformed that entire collection of prismatic slabs into individual cubed units. This is a cubed unit. Look at that. It's an actual cube. How cool is that? And so we may now have the unit that we need to measure the space inside. We might even write it like this. Remember, our squared unit had a two there superscripted. This one has three dimensions. It not only has a length and a height, but there's a depth or width to it as well. Pretty cool. Uh, but now we still have the problem of figuring out how many of these there are. 
wait, it's not that difficult. You did that really cool trick with area. Remember, I asked you to count all the squares on the surface, and you gave me the answer before I finished the question because you did something simple with your math facts. You multiplied the base times the height, or the length times the height. Well, with this one, there's that third dimension. Do you think with that, you could solve this? I have an idea. If we're going to go with a shortcut like that, then do we really need to see all of this? No way! Ready? Boom! And so, behold, we've reduced this prism down to its bare bones. We kept just the height, the length, and the width, or whichever those three each might be. But let's take another look so you can really get a good dimensional view of what's happening here. Here is your faithful, fantastic rectangular prism reduced to its dimensions. You can see there that that height is 5 cubed units, the length 10 cubed units, and then that width over there, another 5 cubed units. So let's write this down. Let's write down those three numbers again. 10, 5, and 5. And what does that equal? Two hundred fifty. But two hundred fifty what? Two hundred fifty units cubed, or I guess it could be centimeters cubed, but this really is units cubed because we're not quite sure what we measured in yet. But we'll get into that in just a moment. We'll write a U with a superscripted 3 so we know it is 250 units cubed, but we don't actually have all those here now because well, we reduced it. But we could make a formula with this, right? What were those three dimensions? Oh, hold on a second, got to get this out of the way. We had our length, width, and height to equal our three-dimensional volume. So volume is length times width times height. Fantastic. That means we can go back to that plant food now and figure out what exactly is going on in there. Volume equals length times width times height. All right. Well, let's get a ruler and let's measure. Okay, so I'll get the length first and we'll do it in centimeters. And I've got 11 centimeters here. Okay. And on this side, 11 centimeters as well. So length and width, both 11s. Now, let's find out the height of this box. 19 centimeters. Let's write that down. So we can see that volume equals length times width times height the length, width, and height of this box are 11, 11, and 19 centimeters. If you wouldn't mind multiplying that and giving me the answer, I'll give you just a moment to do that. That's right! Wow! 2,299 centimeters cubed. Can you even imagine that? If we had centimeter by centimeter by centimeter cubes, we could fit 2,299 of them in here, and we could make them out of plant food, and then that would make even more sense. Wow. But there's something else we can talk about. Did you see how I measured this three-dimensional object? What did I measure first? The length and the width, right? The length and the width down here at the um, 
base of this three-dimensional object. I uh, let me let me give you a view like that so you can see it a little more two-dimensionally. There is that shape, and all I did was measure this and this and multiply those together with that third dimension. Doesn't that seem sort of familiar to you? Length times width. That's sort of like area. What if we made a substitution to this formula? What if instead of writing it like this, we give ourselves an alternative and we say that volume is equal to the area of the base times its height. This might be a more efficient way of writing your formula. I don't know. Take what you will from this. Well, friends, go out there and find some big boxes, rectangular prisms, maybe even your bedroom, and try to find the volume. How much air would you need to stick in there if it got shot out into space? Yikes. Well, friends, shoot for the stars, and I'll see you again soon.